How to Get Rich, an executive summary of the best financial ideas from the number one best-selling book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Number one, be deliberate about seeking wealth. A chariot builder and a musician were complaining outside the walls of ancient Babylon. Dude, I'm always broke. Yeah, me too. I work hard and I have a decent salary, but I never seem to be able to make enough. These two gentlemen don't have wealth because they've never sought wealth. They never learned about wealth, asked for financial advice, and they never pursued mechanisms for gaining wealth. Eventually, the chariot builder has a great idea. Uh, let's be deliberate about learning how to make and manage wealth. And so these two men go off to talk to their childhood friend, Arkad, the richest man in Babylon. This is Arkad the richest man in Babylon, who tells us a story about how, when he was young, he saved his gold for an entire year, and then he gave this gold to his buddy, the brickmaker, to buy jewelry when the brickmaker was traveling. The brickmaker, as you can guess, was an expert at making bricks, not buying jewelry. He bought colored glass, and a year's worth of savings was all for nothing. The moral of the story? Don't send a brickmaker to buy your diamonds, and only take expert advice. Gold slips away from the man who invests in a business he knows nothing about or in a business that wise men disapprove of. Gold multiplies for the cautious owner who invests it under the advice of wise men. Pay yourself first, the first 10% of your salary, and invest it. Make thy gold multiply. Gold in your purse is gratifying, but earns nothing. Invest it so it makes you money. Invest in a few sources at first, then several sources. Let compound interest multiply your wealth. Invest in real estate, businesses, or loan money. Build a passive income. Control thy expenditures. What each of us calls necessary expenses will always grow to equal our income unless we protest to the contrary. Budget then thy expenses. If you make 2000 a month, pay yourself 200 a month and use it to build wealth. Live off the remaining 1800 If you make 20000 a month, pay yourself 2000 a month and use it to build wealth. Own your house. Make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. If you have a small income, buy a small house. If you have a large income, buy a medium house. And if you have a huge income and a huge family, then buy a large house. Although there are a few markets out there which are highly inflated, it is almost always a good idea to own the home you are living in. Keep learning and keep earning. Learn as much as you can about your craft. Be competent. Then you will maintain your job and salary. If you maintain your salary, then you can keep paying yourself that 10% and invest it to build wealth. The richest man in Babylon tells us to guard thy treasures from loss. Do your research before investing. Beware of risky investments, which promise high returns. Consult wise men. Seek advice from competent and rich men, and guard your wealth. History tells us that the walls which protected ancient Babylon were amazingly large and strong. These walls safeguarded the citizens from attack. Likewise, we are told that we must guard our future behind the impregnable walls of insurance, savings accounts, and dependable investments. Think before you give someone money. Always take a promissory note from someone when you lend them money. These promissory notes can be based upon property, a work contract, or the guarantee of a good and rich friend. Before any gold leaves your purse, make sure you always have a way to get it back again. Let's look at the poorest man in Babylon. This guy makes bad financial decisions and has never learned to live on his budget. He is proud of all of his possessions, although he is still making payments on most of them, and enjoys the benefits of having several different credit cards. This guy must conquer debt immediately. The richest man in Babylon reminds us that ill fortune pursues every man who thinks more of borrowing than repaying and he recommends that people with debt 
pay themselves first with 10% of their salary, consolidate debts and repay them from 20%, and live off the remaining 70%. The luckiest man in Babylon was once a slave for a baker. While he was a slave, he was told hard work would be his salvation. From 5 in the morning until 5 p.m., he would work for the baker. But after the bakery closed, the slave would continue working, bake and sell more sweet cakes, and keep the profit. He meets and inspires another slave who works himself out of slavery and eventually frees them both. As free men, they go into business together and both become rich men. Many lazy men sit around and pray for gold. They pray for winning lottery tickets and they pray to be favored by good luck. However, men of action are the ones favored by good luck. Men of action are those who work hard, don't procrastinate or gamble, and who seize opportunities. Men must work hard. Okay, so there you have it. An executive summary of the best financial ideas from the number one best-selling book, The Richest Man in Babylon. I hope you learned something new and are now more capable of making good financial decisions. Thanks for learning. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep on learning, and please share this video with a friend who needs to know this. Thank <laughs> you.